invite our, our uh, boys and girls to come up for our time together.
distribution and laundry love and preschool and all kinds of ways that this church makes an impact. But then we have these encounters, and they're surprises. You never know who God's got a place in your path. Maybe it'll be at the hospital. Maybe it'll be uh, through a phone call with a friend. But always be looking for the ways that God is working in your lives. Um, Let's uh, pray together and give thanks for our blessings. You shared them so beautifully in, in giving our tithes and offerings. Uh, so we'll, we'll pray and then we'll stand and sing the doxology and we three kings. Lord, we lift up our eyes.
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who was born King of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. May God bless the reading and receiving of the Holy Word. Amen. Please be seated. All right, friends, after worship today, we're going to take down the Christmas tree and the lights and all the decorations. So let me ask you, how many of you Magi, you might hear uh, a connection with the word magician. 
weren't kings. In the second place, they weren't from what we consider the Orient. And in the third place, there weren't three of them. And yet, we love singing that hymn as one of our epiphany songs. So actually, these magi, these wise ones, came not from what we call the Orient, but from an area of ancient Babylon, the Tigris and Euphrates Valley. They were scholars who were actually much more respected than kings because in those days in the Middle East, kings were a dime a dozen. There were a lot of them. And uh, so these were representatives of the school of the Magi, the wise ones. They were astronomers, astrologers, scientists, physicians, prophets. They were the religious wise ones of their day. And at the height of their fame and influence, they were actually honored far above kings. Kings were not particularly noticed for being wise men. Kings don't travel somewhere else to worship other kings. They're usually going out to fight them. Check it. You know that. So this celebration of Epiphany, the showing forth of the glory of Christ, celebrates that the light of God's love shone forth, not just for the Jews, but for all who seek the light of love. Here, there is a miracle of joy, but there's also sadness, too. Did you ever notice what a dreamer Joseph was? I mean, I know that the traditional image of, of Jesus' earthly father is that of a steadfast, practical, righteous man. He works as a carpenter. He's good to his betrothed fiancée, Mary. He's fiercely protective of his little family. And yet, when we read in the, the Gospel of Matthew, Joseph follows the guidance given to him in dreams. Not once. Not twice, not three, but four times. Four times he's guided by dreams. Joseph is told not to send Mary away when, when she turns out pregnant, not with his child, but to go ahead and marry her. And his actions must have seemed incomprehensible to his family and friends. And after all, what explanation, what explanation could he give? An angel told him to in a dream? Well, when the baby Jesus was about two years old, the Magi, the wise ones, come seeking to find the king of the Jews to pay him homage. And their visit infuriates King Herod. Now, I know that it didn't say that in the Bible, but that's why we have to use our reason and think about it. If you were the king and somebody else came seeking a new baby king that you didn't know anything about, how would you feel? Furious. Herod vows to seek out this, this threat to his power. Well, Joseph is warned in a dream to take his family to Egypt, and he obeys immediately. They left that very night, Scripture tells us. And again, an angel told him to in a dream. You know what Herod did next? Get all the two-year-old boys killed around Bethany in the surrounding neighborhood, threatened by toddlers. Well, after King Herod dies, an, an angel in a dream tells Joseph it's safe to return to Israel. And Joseph obeys another dream and settles in the town of Nazareth. That's all the Gospel writer Matthew has to tell us about Joseph. Well, these days, when we speak of following a dream, we don't mean obeying instructions that an angel has given us. We usually mean taking the steps to complete our education or find a fulfilling career, build a custom home that's a dream home, uh, start a new business, travel to an exotic location. Those are all plans that we dream of. We think they're going to make us happy and successful. So think for a moment, friends. What is it that you dream about? 
For Joseph, following a dream means listening to and obeying God. The angels that spoke to him in dreams were messengers from God. They gave specific instructions and they required immediate action or there was life-threatening consequences. The light of Christ shone forth and enabled Joseph to listen and obey. John's Gospel puts it this way. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. These dreams give Joseph direction and they must have helped him <coughs> cope with the nightmare that his life was becoming. I mean, think about it. Dealing with his fiancée Mary who was pregnant and not with his child. Wicked King Herod was on a power trip and feeling threatened by toddlers ordering their destruction. They lived in the Roman Empire, which was in an uproar. It was chaotic times. Um, the, they were struggling to govern all their far flung <coughs> provinces, and there was a lot of uncertainty and, and terror. And then Joseph uh, <coughs> took his family to and from Egypt. He's trying to provide for them so that they have safe places to sleep and food to eat. Um, and then bringing them to a new place to live and establishing a life there. Don't you think Joseph's life must have seemed like a nightmare at times? Well, friends, many of us can relate. There are times when our lives seem turbulent. Sometimes our loved one, our, our wife, girlfriend, daughter, maybe ourself, is pregnant in an inconvenient way. Sometimes our world is threatened by terrorists, by crazy, angry people perpetrating random acts of violence. Sometimes we struggle to provide for our families, to find work and safe homes. Our journey through life can seem like a confusing struggle, and we long for an angel's message, for a bit of divine guidance. The good news is that the light of Christ that was born so long ago on some unspecified day, maybe not January 6th, maybe not December 25th, is the true light that gives light to the, everyone in the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. That's how the Gospel of John puts it, did not overcome. The battle is over. The light shines forth triumphantly. We know the end of the story. God's love prevails. The light shines forth. So just like Joseph, we can listen for God's guidance through scripture, through prayer, through the voice of an angel, a messenger. We can listen and we can obey. We can live in love. And in the light of Christ shining brilliantly, just like that first epiphany, showing forth the glory of God.
divine love and guidance for sending your son into the world to continue to inspire us, to save us from our sins, to show us how to live in love. Thank you for, for placing us here in this church, for all the ways that uh, we are blessed and we are able to bless others. We thank you. And even when we feel like our light shines a little feebly or uh, weakly, we're not doing this on our own. Through your Holy Spirit, you place us together with others in the, in the body of Christ, in the church. And let that light shine through us. And we give you thanks. Hear us as we lift our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, And then um, we asked three new people. 
little break, and now he's graciously agreed to come back on the council. So we've got a lot of wisdom up here. I love that you see their faces. They're people that you can always talk to uh, about uh, what's going on in the church. And um, uh, let's let's uh, join together in appreciating them, and then we're going to bless them. So.